Welcome to the very last video in the COVID tracking project series. So I want to start out by just doing a really quick design improvement to align the project that we have here with what I showed you in the demo in the very beginning. So I'm going to update the color scheme of the action bar color here and the color shown in this notification window. Both of these colors are defined in colors.xml, color primary dark, and color primary. So the color primary, I'm going to actually make it be identical to color selected background. And color primary dark, I'm going to make it a slightly darker gray. And because color selected background is the same as color primary, I'm actually going to just make this a reference to color primary. And one last thing in order to make it pixel perfect with the original demo app is if we, if we go into activity main, we can add a margin top on the spark view of 8dp. Let's try it. Awesome, so now you can see that we've faded out and made the action bar less noticeable so that the main attraction of our app is the spark view and the metric being shown. Finally, the very last code change we're going to make in this project is updating the text that's shown in the action bar. Instead of saying COVID tracker, I wanted to say COVID-19 cases per day so that the user has an idea of what they're looking at. So in main activity, inside of onCreate, right after the set content view, we can just say support action bar dot title is equal to, and we're going to pass in r dot string dot app description. The app description is a string resource that we're going to create. The resource value will be COVID-19 cases per day. Hit enter. The support action bar might be null, so I'm gonna wrap that in a question mark. And we need to actually get the string value out of the string resource. And that's straightforward. We just need to say get string and pass in that resource. Let's try it. All right, and now you can see the action bar did get updated properly. There are a lot of natural extension ideas for this project. For example, right now, we're only showing US data and US states, but you might be interested in, for example, the coronavirus cases in India. And that would be a really natural thing that you could build on this app by talking to a different API. Another thing you might think about is instead of showing the delta per day, we might want to see the cumulative data from the first coronavirus case up until today. And there's no way to do that now, but you might imagine having some sort of toggle. And finally, we're making a network request every time we open up the app. However, the data only gets updated once per day. And so you can imagine implementing a local database where we cache all the data. So you could implement something like a room database in our application, store all the data. And if you don't have an internet connection or if the API request is unnecessary, we can simply grab the data from our database. To recap, we covered a lot of ground in building out our Robinhood style coronavirus tracking app. First, we used Retrofit to talk to the COVID tracking project, which is the API which provided all the data for our application. Next, we used two libraries from Robinhood in order to build out the core UI of our application. First was Spark, which helped us to graph this Spark line chart in our application and showed the growth of coronavirus cases, negative, positive, or deaths on a per day basis. And the second library was called Ticker. And that allows us to animate changes in a text view. And finally, we used another library called Nice Spinner in order to have a better looking drop down menu, a better spinner, which shows all the state data. And when the user selects a new state, we update the UI accordingly. If you've been following along and you have your own working version of this coronavirus tracking app, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know how it went or if you completed any extensions beyond what we built. Given that Google still isn't allowing COVID-19 tracking apps in the Play Store, I really hope that you're able to use this mobile app as a way to track the growth or hopefully the decline of coronavirus over time. I'll leave a link to the GitHub repository in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know and I'll help as much as I can. Until next time, stay safe and I'll see you later. Bye.